immediately we start getting then the cutting up of Abiyayala into vice royalties. The vice royalty of New Spain becomes Mexico. We have the vice royalty of Peru. Notice Brazil here. Brazil speaks Portuguese because this part was to the east of the Treaty of Tordesillas line. And then the rest speak Spanish. And then here, British. Uh, the British took it. So folks speak English. We speak English. And notice that with the ways that we speak, the languages that we have, we can tell how much has been destroyed and lost if we understand the history of these lands and how diverse the peoples here have, have been for millennia and how many different languages exist, still exist, but have, many have been exterminated so that, you know, so that we all speak just one language. So like, again, a logic of imposing one way on everybody, everybody having to be the same. This is, what, this is the logic of empire. It's the logic and the practice is that there's an above and a below. And in order to survive, if you're in the below and being crushed, you gotta become acceptable to the above and that's assimilation so we start getting these the cutting up of the vice royalties and again these are just contracts between colonizers over who's going to control what the indigenous populations indigenous communities were not consulted this is not for this is not for anyone below this is just for the above very painfully sadly in the ninth, late 19th century this happens to africa now this happens to Africa in Europe with a map of, of Africa on the wall and the European powers in Berlin, in Germany, are trying to decide who's gonna take what. This is the 1880s. It lasts for a few decades, for a couple of decades. And you see here, it's hosted in Germany. Germany has just become a nation state. Nation states are brand new. Germany had just become a nation state in 1870, and so had Italy, that's what they call it, by unifying, which means that they had to destroy every, everyone else's languages and ways of being, and everybody had to homogenize into one. That's the nation part. The state, the state is the government, the instrument of force, the monopoly of violence, whatever. It used to be controlled by the monarchs back in the day, but ever since people started having revolutions and overthrowing the monarchs, then there became, there, they had this question that they had to confront about how do we make decisions? And so this idea of the nation, the people are gonna make the decisions. Well, who are the people? Well, they should have something in common, a common history, a common language, a common something. And so then they create the nation, and that's when we get this push to assimilate everyone into this idea of what the nation is. It happens a lot in schools. Schools are a huge instrument for that. And of course, also in media and other aspects of culture. So Europe, uh, Europe after cutting uh, us up over here into these vice royalties, starts to cut, eventually starts to cut itself up into nation states. Uh, and Germany was a brand new one and decided it wanted to get into the game of empire too, along with the British and the French and everybody else who was in it in Europe. And so they hosted, Germany hosted the Berlin Conference, also called the Congo Conference, to cut up Africa. And they cut up Africa in this way, again, without consulting without caring about the communities that live on the ground. This didn't happen on the ground, this happened on a wall map. And then in the middle, you see the Congo? The Congo was gifted by Europeans to a single European named King Leopold II, who treated the Congo as his personal rubber plantation and enslaved people there, communities there, and killed them if they refused to work or if they just didn't work well enough for him. And so what we see, that's really the logic. That really is the logic of this, this cutting up of the world from here, from Africa, right? We also then get it happening in the Eastern Mediterranean all the way to the Gulf. This is the territory that the Ottoman Empire held, but fell, the Ottoman Empire fell in, during the First World War in the early 1900s. And 
the Europeans were salivating over those territories for a really long time because everyone knew that Ottoman Empire was going to fall for like over a hundred years, they knew. And so the Europeans were like, oh shit, what happens after the empire, Ottoman Empire falls? Who's going to take all those territories and especially who's going to take the Holy Land? That's Jerusalem. Remember what Palestine means to the medieval European imagination, Jerusalem. This is a world map. Jerusalem is in the center. Okay. So the Ottoman Empire held on to Jerusalem and Palestine for a really long time, allowed Jews to be Jews, allowed Christians to be Christians. It's very uh, largely Muslim. And so there, were, they were, there have been Jews living in Palestine for a long time. A lot of the Jews that got kicked out of Spain went to Palestine and, and were living there for a really long time until... And Israel was created, and it really messed up a lot of things, which we'll continue talking about. But see this logic of the Europeans cutting up the world that had already happened in Africa in uh, just decades before, and had happened in the Americas a century before, and had all started by this line the Treaty of Tordesillas that cut up the globe, the Pope cuts up the globe and tells Spain, you can invade this part and Portugal, you can invade that part. So borders, right? So we're getting now to the shape of Palestine, that iconic shape of Palestine that we know. That one was actually created by evangelicals that went to Palestine.